Hello everyone, I am Dr. Kishore Kumar. I am working as consultant nephrologist and kidney transplant specialist at Pace Hospitals, High Tech City, Hyderabad. I will be discussing about fructose intake and kidney disease. There are two important sources of fructose intake in our diet. The first one is refined sugar. The second one is high fructose corn syrup. So, this fructose which is naturally present in honey and fruits will give the sweet taste to them. The refined sugar which we consume in our day to day life in excess quantities is derived from sugar cane, sugar beets and also palm. Refined sugar usually crystallizes. Refined sugar is made of sucrose which in turn has glucose and fructose. Coming to high fructose corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup is derived from corn. It has higher levels of fructose. High fructose corn syrup has the advantage that it does not crystallize when compared to refined sugar. So, high fructose corn syrup is usually added to frozen foods. This refined sugar and high fructose corn syrup are usually added to soft drinks, desserts, baby foods and many other foods. So, refined sugar and high fructose corn syrup are the two important sources of fructose intake in our diet. Coming to the other important thing that is generation of fructose in our body. Fructose is also excessively generated in our body in patients who are suffering from high blood sugars uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, patients who are having high uric acid levels leading to gout, in patients who, is, who are having obesity that is uh, along with metabolic syndrome and also in patients with kidney disease. Now, what happens to this fructose in the body and how it will lead to deleterious effects in our body? So, after we consume fructose in our diet, the fructose which is present in the food or in the refined sugar or in the high fructose corn syrup is absorbed into the blood. In the blood, it is taken up by the liver and in the liver, it is metabolized that, it is, that is it is broken down. While metabolizing fructose in the liver, it will lead to low energy levels inside the cells. This process of decreased energy levels inside the cell will lead to increased uric acid production. So, ultimately it is the uric acid which is generated during the breakdown of fructose inside the liver is the main reason for all the important side effects of increased fructose consumption in the diet. This uric acid which is generated in excess quantities can lead to high blood pressure that is hypertension, it can lead to higher blood sugar levels that is diabetes mellitus, it will lead to insulin resistance leading to metabolic syndrome, it can lead to liver disease, it can also lead to kidney disease. First mechanism is by indirectly leading to diabetes, hypertension or metabolic syndrome or liver disease. All these causes can lead to kidney disease. So, first one indirectly by leading to all the cause, all the diseases it can cause kidney disease. The second one high fructose intake will lead to increased uric acid generation. This uric acid can lead to scarring in the kidneys. Third one high uric acid levels can also lead to increased intraglomerular pressures inside the kidney. The fourth one high fructose levels leading to increased uric acid in the blood can also lead to increased protein loss in patients who are already suffering from kidney disease. Excess protein loss in a patient who is already suffering from kidney disease can lead to rapid deterioration of the kidney function so that they will progress to end stage kidney disease early. So, if any person consumes more than or equal to two soft drinks with high fructose content, they are at risk of kidney disease. Coming to guidelines 
for fructose intake in patients with kidney disease. First and the foremost, it is better to avoid any fruit juices because fruit juices can have high fructose level. Second one, rather than taking fruit juices, it is better to take natural fruits because natural fruits, although they have fructose in them, along with fructose, natural fruits also have fiber. This fiber will decrease the absorption of fructose into the blood. Along with this fiber, there are also some chemicals which will have positive, positive effect on our body. Third one, it is better to avoid liquid form of sugar. Liquid form of sugar is usually present in sugary teas, soft drinks, power drinks and also in fruit punches. So, better to avoid these type of drinks. Fourth one, in patients who are already suffering with kidney disease and are on dialysis, it is better to restrict high sugar intake. Usually these patients are advised to not to consume excess salt because excess salt intake will lead to increased weight gain in between dialysis sessions. In the same way, high sugar intake can also lead to increased weight gain between the dialysis sessions. Coming to the recommended daily intake of refined sugar, according to American Heart Association, it is 6 teaspoons for women and it is 9 teaspoons for men in a whole day. It is not only about the direct consumption of refined sugar, it means that sugar which is present in any other form in the diet is also included, whether it is tea or it is dessert or it is uh, or, or any other drinks which patient consumes or sweets. So, all the sugar which is present in a 24 hour day is included in that recommended daily allowance. Thank you.